Hello again, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's and here we have a BMW X5 3 litre diesel. So for the car it's done 128,000 miles. I've come here today to do a service but uh, now I've got here he's asked me to have a look at why the car has suddenly become very smoky. So if you look on the uh, rear tail here there's a lot of black soot. Not too sure if you can see that smoke is not very it's a bit difficult to see on camera, but it's chuffing out a bit of smoke. Get the bonnet up. And here, he has got this TDI tuning box, which he's fitted, coincidentally, a couple of weeks ago. I've just asked him, um, has he noticed that the smoke has come after he's fitted this? He said he didn't really think that was related, but obviously what this does is tricks the ECU by sending more fuel in than it should be sending to then give you more power but uh, that obviously mixes up the air to fuel ratio so you're gonna have unburnt fuel coming out the exhaust which will give black smoke so I think we're gonna disconnect this pull the engine cover off and we're gonna follow this back to see where it's going to it's down the back here somewhere I'm going to remove this air box to make it easier to access. Use a... Uh, that's not a 7mm, it's a 6. They're usually a 7. Get that open. We should be able to just pull that apart. Like that, now we can pull these grommets up and get this out. He's got some cable ties here so we'll have to cut those. We've cut that off. And we're going to Plug the air mass meter and now this should just come out. We have that out of the way. Now if we follow the wire in for this we can see here it's going into the fuel rail which obviously just makes it send more fuel in. Um, we've got a broken plug here too and then we've got the other end that's running down here. So we'll get all of this disconnected. That's disconnected, we'll plug the original plug back in. That might need something to hold it. Well, it's quite stiff actually, it's not moving. And then we've got the back end over here. Disconnect that. Another one down the back here. I'll just get back in the original place. Now we'll crack on with the service, we've just got a few little clips here to open and we can take off the top and get the air filter out. This is also can be another cause for your black smoke. If your uh, air filter is not letting through enough air, it's going to mix up your air to fuel ratio even more. You can see there, there is a degree of collapsing. So to see there is it's been bone. So it's it's curved. We've just got a new selection of filters to put in. Just give this airbox a little hoover out. Now we've got that hoovered out as clean as possible. Got the new filter to go in here, air filter. Put that in place. Air filter is all back in place. We've got our extraction pump taking out the oil, and it should be seven and a half liters, roughly. So we're going to get that extracted. A 32 mil socket to open the oil filter housing here. Here we've pulled out the old oil filter. You can see it's all twisted up there. That happens because there's been a restriction in the flow of the oil, so it it squeezes it, basically. A new filter on there, put it down in place. Do a bit of brake cleaner just to wash off that oil spillage. Now 
some people will say oh brake cleaner will dry out your new oil seal that you've put in but uh, no it won't because that's closed tight and sealed it seems like our oil extractor is full so we'll pull that off yep we're full there this is a 6.5 liter but there is 7.5 liters in the engine so we're gonna have to put it back on once we empty it just got a little waste oil drum here that we can just pour this into let's get that lined up on there we can pour it in We're using a 5W30 C3 grade oil. Just got that into our measuring jug here so we know exactly how much oil we're putting in. And it's always worth checking exactly what oil your car uses from your uh, part supplier, they'll tell you. Don't just go by what I'm using. Make sure you get your right one. Each specific car or different year may vary. You can get all this oil put in here. And the thing about this measuring jug is that you don't really need a funnel because it's got a flexible spout here on it. We'll get the oil topped up, close that up, and we can check the dipstick and give it a wipe down, re dip it, and we'll check the level. That's perfect, right on the max there. Cabin filter, we're going to remove these plastic cowlins or whatever you'd like to call them here. 13 mil bolts, just turn them a little bit, and at the L point in a different direction to the arrow there. Then we can lift them up. That one just needs to be lifted up like that. And then the passenger side one that slides under it can come out. So we'll move that over there. Down here again on the box, same thing. Twist. If you look on here, this way is lock, this way is open. And we can pull that up. On the back side of the box you've got a little sensor that we can unplug. And then we can flip the box over. We've got two cabin filters there. So we get them pulled out. Just up the top end here, we've got two little tabs. Press them, one and two, and then it pulls out. We can just slide the new one in, into place. Push it down, push it down, get a little click. And the same on the other end, just push them down click the tabs into place. We can put the engine cover back on. That's all done. Lastly here we've got the fuel filter. We're using this brand here today. And we've got this front corner here jacked up. Next will stand just underneath the wishbone arm there. So here we are underneath between the front wheel and the back just in the centre. Between each you've got the fuel filter here. Just a long tube. Can it through one. And here I've got a quarter inch five millimeter socket there to go onto that little clip and here should be 10 millimeters I can open these by turning it anti-clockwise just get those open and it'll loosen up the clamp of the canister here now we've got those two bolts out we'll open up this uh, Jubilee clip with the 5 mil socket And then we can just pull this tube out. We need to just wiggle it back and forth a bit just to break the seal. Then we'll get it pulled out. The clip should just like pull apart. And then we've got this little horseshoe clip over here to open. And we just pry that up a little bit. And then once it's up, it should just click. Yep. Pulled it out all together. Uh, we'll put that back in in a minute. Now it's ready to pull out. So we should be able to just pull the whole filter out. It's nice and loose there. Get these uh, rubber rubbers here taken off the old filter. And we can put them onto the new one here. Just on here you got a little rubber o-ring. And we've got a new one here for it. Just put that on. Put that onto here the old filter into place just by squeezing them together there we we'll squeeze that plastic housing into there and then we can get the clamps back up and then get this side connected okay so that's all of that that's the clip back in these bolts are tight and this one is on okay now we're going to get inside the car we've got our diagnostic computer hooked up just in case we've got any 
low fuel pressure warnings or anything. So we've just done a scan on the car here and this is some of the faults that it's got listed. Glow plug, air charge pressure control, uh, obviously some of these were unplugged. And then you got the rail pressure sensor that was unplugged when we done the uh, tuning box here. So we're going to clear all of this and hopefully it should be all okay. Got other false electronic faults in the gearbox and other places, so we're just gonna clear all of those. We'll go back and we'll reset the service. I'll we'll go in and bleed the fuel system. And that's just a little explanation of what's happening. Now if you haven't got a scan tool like this, now I've pressed that I can hear the fuel pump working, so you can hear the fuel pump spinning. If you haven't got one of these, obviously you can just press your start button without no feet on the pedals to get your ignition on and wait for maybe 15 seconds, repeat that procedure 3 or 4 times, which each time you turn on the ignition it primes up the fuel pump for maybe 10 to 15 seconds. So if you repeat that, you know, maybe 5 or 6 times, it's going to push enough fuel back into the system to make sure there's no air in it. But we're doing it this way. It's the next step of the engine bleeding. I have to keep the engine running. And that's just uh, the diagnostic machine that's holding the revs there. Now we're just going to reset individually each item that we've done today. So now the oil's up back to 100%. We haven't done the brakes or the rear, we haven't done the brake fluid. And that needs doing pretty soon. So that's about it. Doesn't list a fuel filter on there. That is it. We're all complete on this. And we'll see you on the next video.